Well, I think during uh, 32 years in China, I've seen a lot of changes. I think you could pretty much say everything has changed. We both now want to stay here until they bury us here. <laughs> Well, I think during the 32 years in China, I've seen a lot of changes. I think you could pretty much say everything has changed. The country's changed, but the people have changed as well. I came to China in 88 uh, because in 76 to 78, I was in Taiwan in the U.S. Air Force. Uh, the Air Force sent me to Taiwan. I didn't even know where Taiwan was until I looked on a map. And when I saw it's right across from mainland China, communist China. <laughs> I just knew I'm going to go to war and die. In fact, I gave my car to my sister, my little sister, because I thought I'm going to go to war, die, I'll never come back. I did survive. Two years later, I went back to the U.S. She never gave back my car. <laughs> but I didn't want to go to Taiwan. I knew nothing about China, because in school, we never studied anything. Even in college, we didn't talk, study about Asia, only the West. So when they sent me to Taiwan, I was very unhappy. I remember they told me, China is a great danger to the world. The population, four people, out of every four people in the world, one is Chinese. And I remember I told him, I said, I don't believe that because my family has four people. None of us are Chinese. But anyway, but as soon as, soon as I got to Taiwan, I was unhappy to be there, but the people were wonderful. I just fell in love with them. And uh, very quickly, I began traveling all over Taiwan like I've done in the mainland, bicycled everywhere. But I didn't know that Taiwan was part of mainland China. I had no idea. And then I got a letter from heaven really, was a mainland balloon, <laughs> dropped a lot of leaflets on the ground. And uh, I, when I saw it from the mainland, you know, I know it's propaganda, I didn't believe it, so I had no interest. But then the uh, police came, Taiwan police came running out and said, don't look. Well, you tell a 20 year old, don't look, you couldn't look. I mean, I had no interest until they said, don't look. And they said, if you touch it, go to jail. I thought, well, that's gotta be good stuff. <laughs> so I took like a dozen, I still have one in my office in Shaman. I took them back to my room and looked at them. I didn't understand it, but when I saw the photos of the people, I thought, well, they look just like Taiwan people. And I love Taiwan people, maybe they're similar. And that's what piqued my curiosity. Someday I want to go to the mainland to see what the rest of China is like and learn Chinese. Well, that was 77, I left Taiwan 78. It wasn't until 88 that we finally came during that time. I finished college, started a business, sold a business, went through a lot of stuff, but it was a good thing that I had to wait 10 years because that gave me time to mature, learn some things, get experience, and gave China, uh, China time to change. Originally, I was going to study Chinese two years, and then I didn't know what I was going to do then. I thought something in China, but I didn't know for how long. But the MBA center, they asked me to help them start the new MBA program. And so I said, I'll help for one year. And then I'll, well, I'll help for one more year, and one more year. But the more I learned, they were so excited. And they said, we're going to build one of the best MBA programs in China, and I thought, yeah, right. I mean, this is Xiamen. It's not Beijing or Shanghai. But I thought it was kind of cute that they had that kind of goal. So, I, and I was so excited about their enthusiasm. And I slowly began to realize that if China really can develop and reach its goals, that's not only good for China, but the rest of the world. And that pivots on business. So MBA is a very important thing for China. I thought, man, that's a, if I could do this, I mean, it's, it's a good thing to do with my life. So eventually I thought, why leave? What, what could I do that's any better than that? So now I have no plans to leave. Once I retire, I don't know when I'm going to retire, I just signed a new contract to 68 for teaching, but I love teaching. I can't imagine anything better, especially teaching in China. It's the best place for teachers. But when I first came, the students were much younger because there was no requirement for MBA students to have business experience. So they were all 21, 22, right out of college. So their whole life they've spent in studying studying, they had no real life experience, they knew little about the rest of the world, and so they were kind of naive, they all thought they'd get an MBA degree, they're going to graduate and be CEOs of big companies, and uh, they learned quickly that wasn't true. But to give them credit, many of them did become CEOs, they worked their way up pretty quickly, but, but back then their goals were different. They didn't, you know, I, I wrote, I started writing articles, not just for foreigners, but for Chinese, saying the future is China, not the rest of the world. You know, they said, well, you can leave. I'm not going to leave. That's why I got permanent residence. I said, the future is here, but they all wanted to go abroad. I asked my students, what's the most important management course? And they said, English. I said, English? Then why not go foreign languages department? 
but that's because their goal was to leave China. They thought opportunities were overseas, which at that time I understand. I said that in the future it's going to be here. Uh, now a lot of those students who left back then regret it and wish they'd have stayed here, and many have come back. But now my students have work experience, they're in their 30s and 40s, they're more mature, they have business experience, and they know much about the world because Chinese have a greater understanding of the world today. And now a lot of my students, they're studying business to do business in China because, and like one person told me, all the world's coming to China to, to make money, so why should I go to another place? I know China better than these foreigners. <laughs> so it's, it's they're more mature now, they have higher expectation, but the most important thing, not just my students, but Chinese in general, is they have confidence. When I first came, China was emerging from a lot of problems, decades of problems, century of problems, and now they've seen the changes, economic development, the poverty alleviation, this year the experience with COVID, when the rest of the world's falling to pieces, China, the biggest population, controlled it pretty rapidly. So there's a lot of pride in the country, in the government, and themselves. So it's even more exciting now to teach than 30 years ago.